Syslogs or system logs are just log files that we send from one device to another. And the reason for that is devices like the one you see here, which is a Cisco firewall, doesn't have very much RAM or memory. And so if you were to enable the logging, in this case it would be called console logging, you really wouldn't see that many log files before it would run out of memory. So we need to send the log files off to another location. So you can see I typed in show logging and logging is currently disabled. So my first step is going to be to enable logging. Then after that, I can decide the type of logging and the severity that I'm going to log and then choose the location that's going to receive those log files. So I'll type in logging enable. And I'm going to show logging again just to make sure it's enabled and it is enabled. But it's not going anywhere because all the different types of logging are still disabled. So I need to choose that next step. Now I need to type in that information on where it should go. Logging, host. This is going to be where the log files are going to be hosted. And you need to decide if it's going to be inside or outside. So mine are going to be inside the network, although you can send them to an outside location as long as it's able to receive those particular files. Now I need to find out what my IP address is because it's going to be on the computer that I'm currently on. So I'm going to go to terminal and just type IP config to find out what IP address I'm on. And I'll go ahead and set up the logging host to be inside at .93. Now, when you choose an inside host, you sometimes will get this configure logging host conflicts with route table. You can just ignore that. That has to do with setting up logging on the inside of your network. It would really prefer that you send the log files off site of the network. So that way it could be more secure. The next thing to do is to decide the logging severity that you would like to send. So here's all the different levels and you can see the severity levels as well. Now, if you're going to do something like informational or debugging, you're going to see a lot of messages. If you're only going to see alerts or critical, then you're going to see much less as far as messages going to the syslog server. So you just need to decide what you're going to do. Now, just to show as much as we can for this demonstration, I'm going to choose the informational option just uh, so we can see a lot of different log files and how it looks. Now, there's lots of other types of settings you can put in for logging. However, in most cases, you just need to put in the trap level as well as where the log should be sent, what device should it be sent to. And then you can set up your syslog server as I have done, and it'll start receiving those logs. I've set up a Pessler free syslog. It's under a demonstration license for a certain amount of time. And as soon as I went ahead and set up that ability to send the syslog messages to the device, which is the same server that I'm logged into, we start seeing all these different log files showing up. So I can click on any one of these log files and it'll tell me information about that particular log. If I scroll to the top, you can already see a lot of different people trying to log into my firewall and it shows me their IP address. So, so for example, I can see this outside IP address at 157.230 is trying to log into my Cisco ASA. And here's another one from 205.210. Now you can stop these types of hacking attempts by locking down from which location a particular server or computer can log in. So for instance, instead of having it wide open like I do right now, just for demonstration purposes, I could lock it down to a specific IP or a subnet that I control, and then that'll be the only location from which I can log in. Syslog information tells us the source, severity, and timestamp of any issues that could affect the security of our network.